I've been a full-time game developer for a little over one year now, and it's honestly been a dope experience. I'd never, never have any regrets about it. It's been ups, of course, and downs, and I mean, that's just, that's just life. But it's been sick, and today, I want to let you know about five takeaways that I've come across in the past year. Whether it's something I knew about before, or, you know, just something that's brand new information to me. I want to share this with you so that it can help you on your journey in the future. If you don't know me, by the way, my name is Graham Reed, and I'm a Jamaican indie game developer. So first things first, you have to make a plan. You have to make a plan. You can't just wing it, like, <laughs> despite what it sounds like. It's not just fun and games, you know? You have to really plan what you want to do and where you want to go step by step over the course of several years because it's a business. Unless you're trying to be a hobbyist game developer, then you really need to know where you're going and how you're going to get there. You have to have a good plan. I mean, unless, unless of course, you're balling, in which case, do you? Now, of course, you could have the most immaculate plan, right? Make the perfect plan on paper, and it's great. But you know, life has a way of just throwing things our way. And brings me to my second point, plans. It just does. And you have to plan for that. Obviously, you can't plan for specific scenarios, but what you can do is that you can budget your time so that way you're actually able to, you know, take time off. You're able to deal with whatever life throws at you. It can't just be you working 100% of the time, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You have to make a plan for when life happens, you know? And that's really a big thing that I had to learn this year. Thankfully, I planned everything with padding because, you know, everything can't just be followed to the T like that. But sadly, I had a, a, a loss this year and it was, it was really hard. It was really hard for me to deal with. But thankfully, there's padding in my plan. And so it all worked out in it. And I'm still, I'm still here, still making games. And it didn't derail me. Mentally, it was hard, but it didn't derail my career trajectory. You can make the perfect plan and you can have like the best year in the world. No hiccups, no sadness, nothing. You can have the best year, right? And even then, guys, games are, they're really hard to make. They're really, really, really hard to make. And you might just come across some challenges, you know? Whether it's your game isn't as fun as you thought it would be, or there's one part in the game that's just really hard to make. You never know. And so what I need for you to do is my third point, give yourself some grace because perfection is a lie. And if you keep trying to strive for that and beat yourself up over, you know, things not working according to your plan that you perfected, then yeah, you're just going to burn out. Because burnout is real. <clears throat> Failure is real. Making games is really hard. And yeah, just give, give yourself some grace. Especially if it's your first time making a game, give yourself some grace. You'll eventually you'll figure out your process and you'll figure out how much better it is once you understand the whole cycle of making games. Even if you're an expert, honestly, still give yourself some grace because just because something works excellent the first time doesn't mean that it's going to be the exact same journey the second time, third time, fourth time, you know? Too often in the early years of a dev's career, they decide to call it quits because they're burnt out, they just can't do this, their game idea is just too big, they can't manage. And it, it just sucks because it's not that they couldn't do it, it's just that they weren't prepared for the journey ahead. And making a plan, giving yourself grace, and you know, actually planning for life to happen the way it does, those things are necessary. Speaking of starting small, that's my fourth point. You have to start small. Please, please start, start small. Start really, really small. And if you think you're already small, cut that in half. Start even smaller than that. Because it's really hard to make games and it's hard, even harder to make big games. So if you're trying to make the next Grand Theft Auto, the next Fortnite, the next big Battle Royale, multiplayer, online, loot box, this, that, whatever. Don't do it. Don't trick yourself. You, you can't. You, you probably can. In 10 years, will it be good? Will it be relevant? Will you feel satisfied? Will you make money from it? Probably not. Probably not. 
So start small and even smaller than you think. That's probably one of the biggest pieces of advice any developer will tell you. Start really, really small. And it has a lot of benefits, you know? First of all, when you start small, you get to finish the entire loop of making a game. You make the game, you market it, you ship it, and you learn from it, and you move on to the next thing. And if you do it a couple of times, you can actually realize, oh, hey, maybe I don't even need to make big games because I like this size of a game. Or you realize, oh, now that I've done this a couple of times, I can scale up, I can help get help hire people, all that stuff, and make something bigger. Or you can realize, yeah, now game dev isn't for me, I'm not really enjoying this process. And trust me, it's much better to learn that while making small things than spending so much time working on this massive project, which you thought was small, but <laughs> it really wasn't small. My fifth and final point is that there are different ways to make money. Now, that may sound obvious because obviously there's like a thousand ways to make money, thousands of ways to make money. But I feel like a lot of times when people go into game development, they're thinking, oh, I'm just going to make money from selling a million copies of my game and become a billionaire. But that's not how it works. That's not the only way to make money. And honestly, especially starting out, you might not make that much money just off of game sales. You need to build a reputation, you need to build your catalog. You actually just need to build your career. And that just happens over time. That happens by making small games, releasing them, releasing, releasing. And unless you have a big viral hit, it's not going to happen like that. So yeah, there are different ways you can make money. One of the biggest ways that people do make money is through publishers. Now, I don't personally have an experience with publishers, but they do exist and they can give you money upfront and also throughout your development cycle. And that way you make money before you even finish the game. Now, different publishers work different ways. And of course, you have to find the right publisher because it's kind of hard out there. <laughs> some people have heard some horror stories and people will rob you. Don't, don't let them rob you of yourself, of your money, of your IP. Read your deals, get a lawyer, do all that stuff. But just know that you can get money from publishers. Outside of publishers, you have grants. And grants are really nice because typically there's no any kind of recoup or anything. Grants are there for you, the developer. Whether you're an underrepresented race or gender, sex, anything. Or, you know, it's just your local town that's trying to boost up game development in your city. There are grants for a lot of different things. And it would be very good for you to actually go and seek these grants because they're literally made for you. That's their whole purpose of being. Someone took this money and said, here, we want to give it to you. All you have to do is apply for it. And yeah, you, <laughs> it's really nice getting grant money. I can, I can tell you that much. Now, those first two things, of course, are related to you, your game and your studio. But you can also just work on other people's games. Most recently, I actually got to do some UX UI for this sick, 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 sick game called Protodroid Delta, a game by Adam Kareem and his team. And yo, that was really fun to work on. Not only, of course, I got, I got paid, but I got to level up my skills. I got to get a whole new experience of just focusing on one aspect of game development. I didn't have to focus on the marketing, the business, programming, all that stuff. No, I just came through did what I was hired to do and then learn from that and it, it was it was a really fun experience especially working with Adam who speaking of shout out to Adam because he got me this mic supporting my channel with this mic so thank you if you <laughs> if you listen to my old videos it doesn't sound this nice I can promise you that so big up dog and lastly, you know, you could just go and do a side hustle, something that's not even directly related to game dev. You can open an online store, maybe sell some prints or something like that. You know, you could use your programming skills to help someone with an app. There's so many opportunities. You know, you could even start a YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, share. So yeah, of course, that was just a very quick synopsis of five takeaways I had over my past year. If you want me to delve into anything deeper, just let me know in the comments because some of these things I can definitely talk about more in depth. If you're still here, please, please, please click the link below, go on Wishlist Super Space Club on Steam, 
and catch you in the next one. Look at more.